This video is published under the Creative Commons license BY and CSA, which means attribution, non-commercial and share-alike. Third-party material has been used for which the permission is specified explicitly for every diagram, photograph or whatever has been used. Please mention the author as Andreas Pfennig, Products, Environment and Processes, Department of Chemical Engineering, Université de Liège, Belgium. A disclaimer applies. Welcome to this lecture on thermal unit operations. In this lecture I would, give you, would like to give you a short introduction into the topic. What are the unit thermal unit operations? How are they working in principle? What is their goal and where are they applied? Now if we look very generally at the task of thermal unit operations, they are used to separate multi-component mixtures to either obtain desired products, one product or several products, or they are used to remove undesired or harmful components from that mixture. Well, what are typical examples? Well, one relatively important example that was important for the development of the discipline was actually the concentration of alcohol from alcoholic beverages. So we start out with wine, for example, and in the end you wind up with highly concentrated alcohol, some spirits. That was actually important for the development of distillation. You do that apparently with distillation. Another application for obtaining desired products may be that you have, for example, a biotechnological step to produce some pharmaceutically active component and you want to remove that, so you have some fermentation broth, a wild mixture of various components with your microorganisms in there, and you want to really pick out that one single component you would like to have because that's the active component for your medicine. So that's a task apparently for thermal unit operations, for se thermal separation processes. What are examples for the removal of undesired or harmful components? On the one hand side, for example, you have some well, poisonous components in flue gas. You want to remove them, you can wash them infrequently. You can simply wash them with uh, water, so you spray water into the flue gas and uh, into the flue gas stream and then you possibly are able to remove quite some of them. Another application in this case is that you have wastewater. The wastewater can contain harmful components and either you re remove your harmful components to that extent that afterward you can deliver that wastewater stream, that purified wastewater stream, so it's a purified water stream then, you can deliver that to the environment or you can deliver it to a wastewater treatment plant because even if you have that as a final step before delivering the water into the environment, uh, you sometimes have poisonous components in your wastewater that would kill the biological, uh, the microbes in the biological wastewater treatment step. So you want to remove them first before you deliver your wastewater to the uh, wastewater treatment plant. So this gives you a very rough idea of some typical examples where thermal unit operations can possibly be used. And we will see many more examples and applications in, the, in this entire lecture. I also would like to mention to you the fields of application, so the branches of industry where thermal unit operations are being used. And it's more or less apparent what you have. In chemical industry, we will have a look uh, in just a moment on a typical chemical process you realize that there are many mixtures and many reactions and occurring for desired products and you want to separate the mixtures coming out of such a reactor. Petroleum industry, of course, I mean if you start out with crude oil, you somehow have to produce your gasoline or your diesel fuel and this all requires separation processes. Then in food production, well, that may not be so obvious, but we had one example already, distillation of wine. That's food production. On the other hand side, for example, if you want to extract aroma components from um, plant material, that's a separation process. You remove, you extract, for example, you separate your aroma component from the rest of the plant. Perhaps you have even done that this morning when you brewed your coffee or your tea. So that's separation in food processing. Healthcare and pharmaceuticals, I've mentioned that already with a fermentation example. 
and we also had already an example on environmental um, topics, there apparently also separation is a significant issue. Okay, so these are the typical areas where separation processes are used. Thermal separation processes, one has to specify more explicitly, are used in industry. How are they linked to other processes? And this, in order to answer that question, I would like to have a look on, well, a simple sketch of an equipment. You know, presumably, from other lectures in chemical engineering that it is one way to depict a complex process by splitting it into individual so-called unit operations. And that's what you see here, Well, it's not actually not really unit operations, just some blocks that, that specify some successive steps in an overall process. So you have your uh, reagents, your feedstock, uh, and you somehow want to transfer that to the reactor. Of course, the reactor is the essential part because there your feedstock is being converted into your product and then you have your product in the end. Reality, of course, is not that simple because on the one hand side your feedstock contains sometimes components that are uh, harmful to your reactor, especially to the catalyst. Catalysts can be very delicate. They are, for example, very frequently uh, sensitive to sulfur components or to carbon monoxide. Those components destroy the structure of the uh, catalyst or they adsorb to the surface and then they inactivate the catalyst. So you want to remove those components before you deliver your feedstock to the reactor. What you obtain is of course waste or you, sometimes you can use it also as a side product. You're lucky if you can, otherwise you often uh, use it energetically uh, by just burning it in a power plant and uh, producing well, steam or electricity from that. Then you have your reactor, but of course in a reactor the conversion never is complete, so there's always well, essentially always some uh, unreacted raw material that you want to remove and that you want to recycle for a well, second round, so to speak, through the reactor. On the other hand side, you very often don't have just one product, but you very often have side reactions occurring or successive reactions that occur. So your product continues to react on this very active catalyst to some further uh, component and you have to separate all that. You separate your product from these byproducts and byproducts implies that you can still use those components and also here you may wind up with some waste. Now you will see already two separation steps, one reaction step. In reality that can even be worse. 80% of the um, operating cost as well as 80% of the investment may in some cases be uh, created by the separation steps and only the remaining 20% uh, are taken up by the reactor. This is of course an extreme example, but it can be that bad. You realize that apparently at least it, there's an option or there's a possibility that if you do something non-optimal in your separation steps, you can waste a lot of money if it's 80% of the process. So designing optimal separation processes is essential for the economic uh, viability of your entire process. So you, if you want to be economically success, successful, you have to know how to design your separation processes in an optimal way. And this is actually the goal of this lecture. I would like to show you the means and explain to you the means that we need to design separation processes and individual separation steps in an optimal way. Okay, so we see this and of course now the question is how does that look like in reality? These are just blocks. I uh, have taken this um, photo from, um, uh, from Wikipedia uh, it's, what is depicted here is a refinery in, in Canada and uh, you see very typically actually for the separation steps these vertical tubes and in a refinery those are of course 
one can guess and one can be pretty sure of that. They are mostly uh, distillation columns where the crude oil is being split into the various fractions. Some of them may also be reactors somewhere in here, converting the very heavy fractions, for example, cracking them to obtain small components, small molecules that you are then able to separate again. And of course, uh, some of the vertical tubes are chimneys as well, uh, but I can tell you these very much look like distillation columns, for example. So this completes more or less the very first introductory lecture. I would like to summarize what I've told you as take-home messages. On the one hand side, I have shown you and hopefully implied, uh, it, it, uh, implied in all that is that the thermal separation processes are important and integral part of many processes in many industrial branches, and we have discussed some of them. And I uh, printed the separation in bold because that's what the thermal unit operations are about, about the separation of mixtures. And the optimal process and equipment design is essential for the economic success of your process and of your product that you produce. As said, this finishes this lecture. See you next time.